Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for being here on this channel once again or thanks for being here for your first time if it's your first time. <laughs> so before we get into it as usual, I'm letting you know I'm giving personal readings right now. So if you're interested in one of those, you can just send me an email. My email address is down below. And if you're watching this as I'm putting it out, I do have a special deal on my readings for June. You can check out the details on the community section of my page or just ask about it in the email. So with that out of the way, what we're doing in today's video is a little general pick a card to see what you need to hear right now. We've got some tarot, we've got some oracle, so we're just going to get right into it. So for your group selection, we've got three groups with three different crystals. So for group one, we have some rhodonite. Beautiful. For group two, we have some black opal. Definitely love this particular crystal. All right, and last but certainly not least, group three, we have some chrysoprase. Get some green vibes in here today. <laughs> All right, so as always, this is a general reading, so make sure to take what resonates, leave what does not use your own intuition and discernment throughout the reading. And if you need more time to choose a group or groups, feel free to take as much time as you need, but I will go ahead and start with the first group. Hello, group one. Those of you who chose the road tonight, let's go ahead and see what you need to hear right now. And this was the group that I was tapping into before it started. Sometimes that happens where I'll just get a little insight on what's going to come through in a group, and that was yours in this one. So I feel like it's just really important for some of you. The first card is the Nine of Swords. And that was what I was kind of tapping into, was there's some worry, some anxiety about how things are going to unfold with the Wheel of Fortune and the Knight of Pentacles. So you might be worried because you're thinking, what are all the possibilities? This is not happening fast enough. That's most likely what it is. <laughs> if it's coming through as we've got this anxiety, but it is coming. There just might be some things you can't see about how it's going to come, how it's going to unfold, and especially this speed. If it's the Knight of Pentacles, we can often, if you get to that state where you can take a step back and you can admit, okay, I see some progress happening, I see some things unfolding, but I kind of need or want it to unfold quicker. Now, this is just the current trajectory of things. If you need this to happen quicker, I would say there's probably something that needs to change, but for those of you that know that it's something that you can allow to unfold over time, let's say you're building a business or you're trying to look for the right relationship, those are things that might be better if they happen over time as you can learn and grow and things can happen at like, you know, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> That's just how it is sometimes. And I say that as someone who's an impatient as hell Sagittarius, I get it. <laughs> like we are not saying that it's like, you know, the worst thing in the world to want things to happen right now or quicker if you know what you want. I get that it can be frustrating, but this looks like it's just one of those things that the current pace is the Knight of Pentacles. So you can build it with every, like let's think of like building a house, like building a brick house. So you can put every single one there. So you can know every single corner, every single aspect of this house you're building. Like you will have all of this under your belt. You will understand every little bit of it and you're building it on such a strong, steady foundation. That's the really, really, really <laughs> beautiful part about working with this Pentacles energy is like, yeah, it takes longer, but think of like, think of someone who like slaps together this home <laughs> really, really quickly. And the foundation is like crooked. Things are sliding off the tables because they didn't take their time. Like there's cracks in the walls. Um, the decorations look freaking awful and then you're sitting here and maybe it takes you a few more months or maybe it takes you a few more years and people are like what's the hold up what's taking so long but then you get it done and you don't have to constantly fix things <laughs> like there is a time and place for let's say the knight of wands or the knight of swords energy sometimes that's the hand we're dealt sometimes that's how things can unfold for whatever reason. Maybe there's less details to attend to so they can happen quicker, 
But when we've got this beautiful Knight of Pentacles, we don't want to take it for granted that we have an eye for detail, that we don't want to cut corners, that we don't want to knock people down the ladder to get what we want. We're really acting with attention to detail, but also what I'm getting with this Knight of Pentacles is like integrity, where that's that's what I was getting about not wanting to cut corners. It's not just your eye for detail that's not letting you do it. Like, oh my God, I missed that. <laughs> I can't just sweep things under the rug because like I know the dust is still there. That's what I'm getting about you, group one, is maybe one part of you is really... You could even be comparing yourself to others. Just take that one as it resonates with that nine of swords. If you somehow intuitively know that these changes are coming, it's most likely something really physical, really tangible as well. But I also got this message that maybe some of you, it's about improving your relationships or it's about growing on your spiritual journey. Let's say you're trying to learn a skill. You're trying to learn a skill to make money, to start that business, to get a degree or something. And you're thinking other people did it quicker. Other people did it like this. This reminds me of a recent reading I did where it was like, let's cut the comparison right now. You're on your journey and you cannot look at, I'm gonna use that example. You can't look at the Knight of Pentacles versus the Knight of Swords or Wands and say that one is better or worse. They all have their strengths and their weaknesses. And for the Knight of Pentacles, the frustrating part for most people is going to be the pace. But you can rest easy, know that you're not missing details, that once you get there, you are not going to have to turn back around and look at all the crap you dropped along the way and go back and pick it up instead of just once you set this up, you'll just enjoy it. It's almost like some of you might be setting up some passive income for the future where it's just going to be way, way easier. We get to that King or Queen of Pentacles stage finally, and you can just kind of rest on your achievements. You can rest and receive and enjoy your abundance, enjoy the environment you've created, enjoy the kingdom you've built around you. That's what I'm getting for this. It's just something that needs to take a little longer. But if this anxiety, these worries are coming through, take this part as it resonates. If you are like struggling with actual anxiety, this might be something where we just need some healthy coping mechanisms so we can focus on the positive. Because I think your intuition is telling you that this wheel of fortune, these are big faded changes coming your way and they're coming your way because you're putting in the right energy. So this is just something, it's hard to explain to other people sometimes too because maybe you are having a hard time explaining the pace to others. Maybe you understand that. I feel there's some in group one who you understand this, but you're almost like having a hard time explaining to others why you're taking your time. Like think for example, someone who just knows their body and knows their stress levels and knows that they want to take like six years to finish a degree or seven, who cares? <laughs> just because most people do it in four, who cares group one if you're taking eight years to finish it because you're working another job or you're working on two degrees and people got all these questions, but that's really for you and you to answer alone. <laughs> Unless someone's really pressing you or it's family, I know there's nuance to that, but as far as the grander scheme of things, this looks like it is the right energy for that Wheel of Fortune to happen. And we could sit here and say in a perfect world, this and that, but in the current world, in your world right now, it looks like the Knight of Pentacles. Pay attention to detail. Do not skip steps. Just do things the way that you feel like is the highest, best way to do it. And that's how you're going to get these results in the time that they're coming. And it's most likely not going to be an overnight process. For some of you, it could even be literally about moving forward from this anxiety, from these worries. This could be something internal. If you have so many fears and stuff or past whatever, <laughs> I won't get too into the details. I know it's hard, but you could be taking a little while to recover from something and thinking, oh my God, what's wrong with me? When really it's just, you know, Nine of Swords is not fun. Sometimes that takes time. Sometimes that healing process doesn't happen overnight and you don't want to skip over something and have to revisit it all the time and later or just gaslight yourself and say, I'm fine, everything is fine, I'm fine, you know? <laughs> you know, like we do sometimes, or you probably know someone who does that sometimes, I'm guilty of this. <laughs> 
that's why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at you. But you know when people are like, I'm fine. Everything is fine. And then two weeks later, you're just crying on the couch. <laughs> so better to deal with it now and for people to question why you couldn't come out tonight than two weeks from now or a month from now, you're the one suffering because you pretended everything was fine. So we have managed to be glad, create your own happiness regardless of conditions. So I think this is also about tuning into what you can create now, what you can do now that's in alignment of what you're trying to build. Where are you trying to get? Because I think there are certain things that you could be working out now. This is about the overall. It's almost like taking every aspect of that, how to word this, taking every aspect of that final goal and building it up one, one piece at a time versus completely building this part. We got from zero to 100, great, but now this and this and that you have not spent any time on. You have no idea. Think of like someone who builds up the business and this is not a judgment on anyone who's done this, by the way. <laughs> this is about your path and how it may be very different from others where we're building up so many things at once and it's almost like, like think of like a circle expanding versus someone has to build up this and then that and then that and we've completely neglected this so now we have to do personal growth but we're like rich, you know? <laughs> where everyone's dealing with their own issues or someone who does all their inner growth and then they're like, oh my goodness, I have no money in my bank account and I have no friends and <laughs> I feel like there's this is an invitation to start growing those other aspects of this. You may be really focused on this goal, but does that end goal you? Does that end game you have positive relationships? Is that something you could be building? Could you be showing appreciation or gratitude for the good things in your life. And you can start with the small things. I said this to a group recently, it may seem silly to you now, but if you start by showing gratitude for the things that you do have that some people may wish they had. I know we talked about not comparing, but there may be some things that you have. Let's go back to the Knight of Pentacles. <laughs> your skills for attention to detail and you probably, even though I feel like this situation has gotten to the point where it's testing your patience. I feel like you have the patience of a saint compared to most people. I really do feel that. <laughs> I feel like you probably have a little more patience than me <laughs> and some other people I know. And that's okay because we all have different strengths to work with. So I think this is just about being honest and grateful for what your strengths are, even though you might be worried about your perceived shortcomings. So you could also be working on those right now too. If there's some things you wanna work on, it's not about being overly critical of yourself, but if you're being realistic and there's certain things that you know, oh my goodness, I could be working on my business sense. I could um, go read that book or that article or whatever, go to that person's page who always has really good advice on self-help, self-development, on building friendships, whatever it is, self-healing. I don't know, <laughs> on, on these positive coping mechanisms for when you get worried. Because again, this energy is here. This energy is real and tangible. Your wheel of fortune and the knight of pentacles. And then it's almost like this worry, this anxiety just gets in the way. And especially if this is something that's happening really gradually, I'm going to say this. I say this with love. <laughs> if you need a moment to process it, that's fine. But as far as dwelling and dwelling and dwelling and dwelling and saying, this is my fear. So this is what's going to happen. We don't want to sit there too long because that's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy when we could just be taking these tangible steps to make it happen in the time that it's going to happen instead of saying, oh my God, I'm the worst because it's not here yet. So we have choices, feeling blocked and restrained. Absolutely. So we're not going to dwell on that because we've already talked about that. Feeling blocked and restrained. There may be some area that's being blocked and restrained right now. I don't have all the answers to why the universe or whatever higher power you believe in or just the powers that be, <laughs> however you perceive it, sometimes we're blocked in life. Sometimes certain people don't get the success they want exactly when they want it. And that's just how it is sometimes. So are there certain things that you could be doing in the meantime? It's almost like if you're sitting here and for whatever reason, think of this like 
for me when I'm like sick. I'm gonna use an example that's me <laughs> so people don't take it personally. For me when I'm sick, the worst thing I can do is sit around thinking, oh my God, I should be doing this and that. This is so crappy because I have all this to get done, blah, blah, blah. And you make yourself feel worse and you're also still not gonna get anything done. <laughs> so what could you be doing in the meantime? Could you be doing some self-love, self-care? Um, is there something in regards to like, if you're worried about building this thing up, could you be doing like planning or something like that? Something you're capable of doing right now instead of spiraling of, oh my God, I'm sick and can't do shit. <laughs> like that's really not gonna help the situation. It's actually just gonna make you feel like there's something wrong with you. So you'll have to take that example and put it towards your situation. But like for whatever reason, maybe this is about your friend circle. Maybe there's not people around you who get you. Maybe you live in a really small town. You've met everyone. They're not your cup of tea. Well, what are there might be some other things that you could build right now, even if you really want that. If it's just not happening right now, if it's blocked right now, what are some other things you could build and focus on and really nurture? Even if for right now that's yourself and your mental health, because that's not something to overlook. It's really important, especially if you're missing, if you're dealing with the nine of swords and you're having these worries, well, why are they coming through? Which part of that is valid? Which part of that, you know, has a good point where you don't want to say you shouldn't feel this, you shouldn't feel that, what's wrong with you and say, I hear you. It's not here yet. Like those are valid concerns, but this and that and the other, we can do this, we can do that. It's not a direct statement on your worth. I think that's a big one where it's not a direct statement on your worth and just because something's not here yet doesn't mean that it's never coming even though that voice in the back of your head might be saying that. I feel like part of you knows that this wheel of fortune you're putting in the right energy to get these changes in your favor but I think there's just a voice in your head. Uh, I mean maybe you grew up without some of this. Maybe you know what it's like to really struggle financially or to see someone who's very isolated and you're just worried that that's how it's not how it's going to go even though part of you knows that's not true. So, that is what I have for you group 1. I'm wishing you all the best. All right. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Hello group two, those of you who chose the black opal, let's see what you need to hear right now. So your first card is the death card. So you're definitely going through some huge changes and transformations, especially emotionally, spiritually, internally. There's probably a lot of internal shifts going on. So sometimes that can make you feel very drained. That can make you feel very confused. And I think we're going to get into making space for what's going on internally for you, as well as maybe from like a bird's eye view, what's actually going on, what's actually coming to you. Cause when we're going through those death moments, <laughs> it can feel really scary. It can feel really confusing. We've got the six of pentacles. So this may have to do with the give and take of things. You may be someone who's often led with a very generous spirit. And sometimes that worked out for you. Sometimes you led with generosity and people return generosity or you led with generosity and the universe really provided in a very immediate way. Some of you may have been like really good at manifesting things, but maybe there's been some shifts going on. So it might feel a little weird, but I know for those with generous spirits, sometimes people don't receive that and it can make you go through a lot of hardships. It can make you worry about trusting others or feel like there's something wrong with being kind and loving and generous. We've got the Four of Swords, so I do feel like as far as actual advice and guidance readings, like I definitely feel, and I felt this when I was shuffling your cards, <laughs> it may feel strange, but I, like my heartbeat was like faster for your group. <laughs> so I feel like emotions might be really high right now, or you might be really like group one was really worried about for something, but for you, I can tangibly feel it. I have to like slow down and breathe. So group two, during this process, you have got to give yourself time to rest and meditate and figure it out internally as much as you can. If you're if you're out here searching for answers, I feel you or see you finding those from a place of peace and rest and kind of taking it easy and taking care of yourself 
especially mentally because it's the sword suit. So it does talk about not just sleeping for 18 hours a day, not just like physical rest, but rest that actually is letting your mind rest. We're like, yeah, we want to figure out where we're going. We want to figure out why did that person come up short? Why did that person not give back what I was giving? Why was this not reciprocated? These questions like, why did I put this energy out into the universe and I didn't get it back? Did I do something wrong? I think there needs to be some moments of silence and peace within yourself because there's so many things you're trying to figure out and so many changes. It's almost like sometimes those changes, you do the groundwork mentally, you figure it out mentally, you ask all these questions, and then it's more about just like allowing it time to unfold, allowing it time to integrate. I think that's a consistent message that's manifesting in very different ways. Like group one had messages about allowing something time to unfold. But for you, it's like, I feel that you have done the groundwork and really, really been very, the words are selfless and generous with your energy. And that's not a bad thing. It's just about picking and choosing or learning how to see the red flags. You know, if this is about the people in your life or if this is about you like overextending for some situation, let's say, let's find an example. Like if you work and make a certain amount at your job and they're constantly asking you to put in extra hours and they're not paying you overtime, that's an example of this. This would be an example of saying, well, I'll work those hours if you pay me the overtime or if you're gonna keep doing this, I'm gonna be looking for something else. I'm gonna protect my peace because I'm getting a few messages from that Four of Swords is you may be learning a lot about this give and take and realizing, you know what, there's some things I won't take. <laughs> there's some things I won't take and I'm going to protect my peace at all costs right now. If I know that someone is coming for my peace or doesn't care about my peace, doesn't care about my mental well-being or, and that's not always group two, there is nuance here. Sometimes people will disturb your peace because they are just very clueless. <laughs> it's it's less about malicious intent. And if the effect is the same and you want to see it that way, that's fine. But for some, we care about the difference between someone who has malicious intent and is a bit of a steamroller on purpose versus someone who's just kind of clueless. And then when you set a boundary like this actually upset me, they could meet you at more of that six of pentacles. Maybe they are a generous person. And there is a difference because one can be reasoned with. <laughs> one can be reasoned with. One type of person can be told. It's the difference of people who respect boundaries and don't. So I think that's where it's going to differ. Like different parts of group two. Maybe some of you have dealt with people who... They actually knew your boundaries and they just could not care less. So those people, we might have to be moving away from them. And this this internal death moment, I think you're going through a huge transformation and realizing my, my generosity is not a bad thing. It's an amazing thing. It's a superpower I have. But this could have been like bleeding into other areas of your life. You know, if you're on the, just take this if you're on the like woo-woo manifesting side of things. But if you have been having someone to your knowledge or not drain you and drain you and drain you and take your generosity and take your energy that could be just draining your energy and you want to build other things you want to meet other goals you want to manifest more abundance you want to have positive relationships where they reciprocate this where maybe there were some rose-colored glasses or something like that with someone who's just you know the people who will how do I put this lightly? <laughs> like, they're always there when they want your advice or they want your shoulder to cry on, but then when it's your turn, they're nowhere to be found. That kind of vibe. Just take that as it resonates or take that energy and apply it to whatever area. I think you're just moving to a place where you're investing more of your time and energy to places where it is reciprocated and that's where you're getting your outcome because I feel this is causing a lot of frustration and it's causing your emotions to run high. And it's really not that you shouldn't be doing this. It's just maybe you've grown and you've shifted and you just have more, 
you might be more perceptive now or maybe something has changed because sometimes people aren't always like this and they go through something and then they just start acting out sometimes people shift and change like with this death card moment you might be going through positive inner transformations but maybe someone's going through something difficult and it's they're letting it make them treat people like you know let's find a pg word i don't know <laughs> like just not so great like to just become like a taker and a taker and a taker without realizing that you need peace, that you need healing, that you need a shoulder to cry on sometimes. We have keep your temper, don't allow anger to rule you. <laughs> so I promise group two, this is not saying don't ever be angry, don't have emotions. It's saying don't let anger rule you. Don't let it change you. Don't let resentment for one person make you feel like Oh, you know what? I can never act like that. I'll never trust anyone again. I'll never be generous again. Oh my God. <laughs> there's this, and I share it in a joking way, but there's this one clip where someone, I don't want to use any names, but she's like, I will never do anything nice for anyone again. <laughs> and to me, that's just the funniest thing because I think that's funny to people who have been there where they were really generous, almost like overextending, and then someone just walked all over them. So the point of that is not to actually not ever do anything nice for anyone ever again. It's just to be perceptive about who's going to give it back versus who's taking advantage or taking you for granted. I think group two, to just get down to the, to like boil it down to something really like small. I think these changes are positive. I think you're going to retain your generous spirit but I think you're actually gonna be receiving more generosity. I think this is more of a time for receiving for you, for relaxing, receiving, regenerating, healing what you've been through. I think if, oh my God, like this is so hard. <laughs> like this energy we're talking about is so hard because you will feel taken for granted, right? So you can be angry, but I think the big message here is this anger is just, I think it's about maybe a sense of justice, a sense of self-worth, somewhere in between that of you feeling like that's so wrong and it still happened and I can't wrap my head around it. But also maybe you've grown so much in self-worth that you see if I'm giving to someone, why wouldn't they want to give back? That's just strange to me. I'm worth generosity. I'm worth someone showing up to me. So there's like maybe some anger there of like, why did that happen? Why did they treat me like that? Or why didn't I see it sooner? Don't be angry at yourself. Like we all have our moments, right? Group two, if, if there's something I tell you not to do, it's to not let this change you. Don't let one person or even 10 people's whatever whacked out behavior make you feel like you need to change as a person because there's nothing wrong with being generous and loving and giving. It's just about having that be towards the right people. And as corny as it sounds, I do not care. I will be corny all day long, group two. Be generous to yourself right now. <laughs> be generous to yourself because you don't, there's give and take. You don't always have to be the giver. Like let your friends reach out to you now. Let your loved ones reach out to you. Let the universe extend itself to you right now because I feel like you're constantly giving, 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 giving. And I think it's time for some Empress energy and I'm feeling like receiving and feeling your body. Where does this, is this like really hurting your heart? Like your heart area? Is this causing your heart to beat faster when you think about this? Did you feel some type of way? Because we can go through those changes and allow it to transform you in a positive way where you're just group two. It's not molding you into this hardened person, but it's turning you into someone who just has even higher self-worth and who's even more discerning. That's what I'm seeing is you're just becoming even more high self-worth and even more discerning and more strongly protecting your peace. More strongly saying, you know what? I need a peaceful day in, so I'm not gonna go out just to people please. Maybe there's some people pleasers here because <laughs> I know that's hard, not from personal experience or anything group two, but I know that's really, really hard when you will sometimes give up your peace Ooh, just just to make others happy. We don't always want to do that. We've got falling, the unknown descent, momentum, and change. So I think at the end of the day, 
we do want to make space that these changes are probably difficult and scary because you might have been around certain people for a long time and you may feel like I'm going to use this example like sometimes positive changes are scary because we have half a foot in our old self and half a foot like half a foot <laughs> not half a foot we have one foot in like the old ways and one foot in the new ways so this older version of you i'm just going to use this as an example for you to take and, and apply as it resonates if the older you did not set a lot of boundaries with people who were taking and taking and taking and almost didn't even notice when they weren't giving back because you were so happy to give because you're so generous. And now you've seen the light, let's call it. And you start setting stronger boundaries. That old version of you might be coming in to say, oh my goodness, you're being so mean, you're being so harsh. How could you not go out tonight when they asked you to when you're tired? <laughs> Do you hear how it sounds when I just say it that way? Versus when it's actually you doing it, we can be our harshest critic and you could literally just be like, I don't have time to be the therapy friend today. I'm busy crying. Like, could you show up for me <laughs> for once? And you might be thinking that you're very like needy. You might be thinking that you're being needy or greedy or selfish when I feel like group do. Honestly, you might just be asking for about one to 10% of what you constantly give. Like, it might be, and just take this part if, as it resonates, if you've got a good circle of supportive people around you, allow them a chance to show up for you right now. And you might, some of you might want to ask for this support. I will say that where it's, the extending energy right now is more about asking for the support you need and less about giving, giving, giving support all the time, giving energy all the time. I think this is more about a vulnerable moment of asking for what you need, whether that's from those that you love and those that you know are actually sticking up for you and caring about you or from the universe <laughs> without it being like, I'll give up this and I'll do this and I'll do that and being like, I'm sad, I'm angry universe, can I have some support? I don't feel great right now, I feel scared, I'm trying to set boundaries, I'm trying to receive, I'm trying to protect my peace and I'm having a hard time. I think this is more about you receiving support for this journey. And then as far as tangible things, this could be just learning more. I think this is really about you learning to go to the next level with Empress energy of receiving, of allowing yourself to be and exist and receive without feeling like you have to prove something, that feeling like you have to prove worthiness, that you have to be like, so many people feel like they have to be constantly useful to deserve comfort or peace or anything. I know a lot of people, and it's heartbreaking to hear, honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna get emotional, but there's a lot of people who feel like they constantly, I mean constantly, have to be on and doing things for people and giving um, in order to receive anything like this. So I think you're you're going a long way when it, or you're making a lot of improvement when it comes to your worth and not feeling like you constantly have to prove that worth. I love that group too, <laughs> but that feels like, yeah, it feels like take this part as it resonates because I'm not a doctor and I'm not feeling your heartbeat, but I feel like for group two, this may be having a strong, like actual tangible impact on you. So whatever you can do to like, make sure you're getting enough rest and mental rest right now and you don't have to be thinking about this all the time that was an important one <laughs> where we're also not constantly reaching for the answers like do some of that work if you need to ask and answer some big questions for yourself do it and then let it be because sometimes part of the healing process is just letting it integrate where maybe it will just take some time where you know that you know the changes you're gonna make, but they can still take time. That's what group two, that's just how it is. <laughs> Sometimes we can mentally say, I need to do more of this, I want to do more of this, and it can actually still take time for it to be comfortable. So you might be going through the uncomfortable part right now and feeling like you're doing something wrong because it's uncomfortable, where that's not necessarily true. This could just be part, like the uncomfortable part of the transformation process. So that is what I have for you, group two. Interesting, because black, um, 
what is it? Black Opal is actually really good for conquering fears. So take that as you will. <laughs> That's what I have for you, group two. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Hello, group three. Last but not least, those of you who chose the Christ of Praise, let's see what you need to hear right now. So your first card is the King of Wands. And it's really interesting. We have the King of Swords as well. So I think these are both speaking to you as far as what I'm getting right now. We'll see if any more come through, but I feel like this is speaking to how much time, energy, and effort you put into developing both your passion, drive, energy, charisma, maybe even some skills. If it's not just about tuning into your energy levels and learning about it and learning how to take action, but I feel like that is a big part of it with the double king energy is learning when and where you want to actually really go after something, which is really interesting because there is some common energy between all the groups, but this is like a really big contrast <laughs> to group three where I felt like it was it's just like about receiving right now whereas right now I feel like it's a very empowering sense of doing and taking action and what do I want to build and where is my energy needed and what am I passionate about let me just go ahead and do it <laughs> let me just go ahead and do that and work on that and this could be something related to career if this is about career moves about uh, especially if you're really passionate about it because with wands, there is that really big energy of having a spark and a passionate drive. So that could either be, if this is about career, that would either be that you've made a career about something you're passionate about, something you're very highly skilled at at this point. We cannot dilute that. We cannot evade that at this point. If you've got double king energy here, <laughs> there's a really strong intellectual standing or understanding. <laughs> Funny how I mess up my words with the swords energy but intellectual understanding, you get it on the cerebral level, you know the ins and outs, but there's also like this really creative, passionate energy. So this could be two separate things you do. Like I could see you being a good like accountant or something while also being like a really good artist or musician or something. But let me see how this is coming through. Either way, you have this energy, either way, you have the substance. When we've got to the king or queen level, if there's any ounce of you or any little tiny bit of you that's doubting your substance, doubting that you have put in the work to get either what you've already gotten or what you're about to get because we've got the chariot card here. So whether this is something you've recently received, a really big victory, a really big level up moment, a tangible upgrade where you can see, oh my goodness, I've gotten good at this. I really understand my energy levels. I'm really good at just going ahead and taking action. And it's not about being rushed, but you certainly are not at a point where you're going to hesitate on something. And if that, if that's not, <laughs> I cannot speak with your group. It's so funny. Um, if that's not where you're at, you're about to get to that place with something. And it may be in like the intersection of this wand's passion energy, this like passion project, your energy where you really feel called to go, as well as something that intellectually just makes sense. What are the actual facts of this? As well as your ability to speak up for yourself, to advocate for yourself and to set some really, really strong boundaries. And I don't say harsh boundaries, I'm saying strong boundaries. <laughs> if there's something you care about and something you need to do and there's all these little distractions or something, I do not see you letting something that you can, if there's something that you can control, I feel like you're just gonna seize control of that. And that's not controlling. <laughs> that's just you being really, really passionate, driven and action oriented right now. If that's not where you're at right now, I feel like these are some strengths that you're being called to, well, call upon right now. This is what's leading you to, I think, this chariot moment where we talk about a really long fought battle that we're coming out victorious on. So if this, this could be something external, let's say there's something you have a really strong intellectual understanding of, like, I'm just going to use the example, maybe you're a musician, that's just the example. There's that passion for it. But you also like, we had to actually learn like the theory, the history, whatever, that actually fuels that passion. I feel like they're fueling each other. There may be something that you 
get so excited about that you don't mind doing the boring parts of it. <laughs> they actually end up being like intellectually stimulating because it's something you care about. And then with this, like the understanding, it's making you more passionate about it. It's not bogging you down. It's not making you bored of it. It's making you more excited. So I feel like there's also, there's got to be something that you are just, if you don't know it right now, if you're like, I have no passions, I think that might be the victory. <laughs> so you've got to take this kind of timeline for it as it resonates. I think there's something that you can have this victory of knowing what you're passionate about to the extent where you can learn more and more and more and more about it. And it just makes you more passionate about it. And your passion makes you want to learn more. I feel like this is something that you could become like a master at. So if that's divination, if you're also a card reader, I could see you like knowing the tarot inside and out, knowing the history, knowing different kinds, knowing like this deck versus that deck. When did they come about? All the little ins and outs. You just be excited about them. They might bore other people to death. <laughs> but you're like... I feel like you could be mastering either two separate things, one that's like, I don't know, accounting or something, and then one that's in the arts, or you could be finding the crossroads of those things and really finding this like really sweet spot where you can make something really new and beautiful. But either way, this is probably <laughs> a really noticeable, tangible when it's a next checkpoint. So if this does have to do with money and business, I think you're about to have a breakthrough. You're about to have a win. You're going to get that, whatever that is you're looking for. Um, if you started a business, you might be getting more clients. You might be getting more views, something that you need. Whereas we do have some other energy here. We've got the five of wands <laughs> and look how we set them out. The page of swords. So one, that's so beautiful. I know it's probably frustrating because we've got the five of wands, but I think at the times you do get frustrated or competitive, even if that's with your past self, because I'm going to be honest with the king of swords, we've got the page of swords highlighting that and the five of wands with like competition and frustration. If you need to work through that, in a healthy way and find a healthy outlet for some anger and frustration, that is totally fine. But I wouldn't get too caught up on the perfectionism of it because if we've got this growth here, I think you have come a long way. I think it might be more helpful right now to just give yourself credit for how far you've come, for how much you've learned about something, even if that something is about yourself. If this is all connected, and if this is just a spiritual journey, if this is just the journey of your beautiful, lovely soul, that maybe it's been frustrating that you took a while to get there or that it took so much energy or there's this inner child coming through. It could be a less experienced version of you or your actual child self maybe has some repressed frustrations or anger or felt like they had something to prove. And so when it doesn't come through perfect or it doesn't come through now, even these victories, it's like the little nitpicky, well, I could have done it sooner if I did this. Or if I had known I was excited about this sooner, I could have been so successful. People could have recognized me, blah, blah, blah. Um, where that might not necessarily be helpful right now. <laughs> Much like I told group one, comparison is not, not going to be a good energy for you right now, especially with like, not that substance is all that mat like the tangible results, that's not all that matters. If you were this page of swords, you were still worthy. Maybe that's something that would be helpful to understand is when you had less understanding, when you didn't know how to take action or you didn't know what actions to take or you didn't know how to stand up for yourself or like even knowing the right words for how to express yourself. If you're the way that you communicate with others and the way you communicate yourself with yourself. <laughs> I, there's something going on here because like the fact that we're talking about communication and you're the group that I cannot speak for. <laughs> and so like I'm having a sense of humor with it because what's, I mean, what's the alternative? Should I just like stop it? No. Should I give up? No. It's just, you know, these are little 
bumps in the road and I think that's reflecting the energy that's coming through is like this could be frustrating or I could be like it's fine <laughs> like I'm doing my best <laughs> group three like this doesn't mean anything like deeper this is not something that makes you less worthy and when you do like maybe mess up a little bit because I feel like this combination the strength is what we talked about but maybe the shortcoming with this that you want to work with or uh, let's say area for improvement because i don't want it to sound too critical would be like when you come up short when you don't get the result immediately i think you need to take it easy on yourself that's something that has come through in every group for one way shape or form but for you, it just looks like maybe this inner child is coming through. Like, I just want to achieve a lot. I know I want to know how to stand up for self myself. <laughs> I want to know how to choose the right words and to be able to express myself. And so, like, hear that inner child out, but don't let them run the show. Because, <laughs> like, we're not a child anymore. So that's that really interesting balance there where you want to help to nurture that inner child and tell them like, it's fine. You don't have to be perfect. Like we're gonna get there. We're doing our best. You are worthy as you are. I feel like that might be something your inner child needs to hear is that like, yeah, we want those victories. We want that progress. I want a tangible victory. And I want like proof that I'm building up what I'm building up. I want something substantial, but that's not what makes you worthy. You are worthy the whole time. Very similar to a past group's energy. We have do not drink poison. Do not do things that are bad for you. So if this is related, that's fine. If it's something separate, that's okay too. But I'm putting it here because I feel like right now, group three, my goodness, similar messages to a very recent reading, but I just would not be out here looking at other people's progress and how they're appearing, especially online, if it's that wand's energy, I would not be comparing yourself to other people's like perceived success and perceived skill and perceived perfection, especially my goodness online. I'm just gonna say that <laughs> part like out loud and proud. Do not look at other people's online life right now and be like, oh my goodness, I wish I had that because it's so carefully curated you don't see the ups and downs most of the time unless someone is weirdly authentic <laughs> you're not gonna see that they were this page of swords they are not gonna share that unfiltered uned unedited picture of them in their awkward teen phase whereas you know that version of yourself that version of you is still somewhere inside of you being insecure and it's easy to see other people and think They've always been perfect. They've always been so skilled. They've always been this and that. And I feel like, let's talk about the strength of that inner child. I feel like there's a curiosity there. There's a really strong intellect and there's a really strong desire to be able to express yourself verbally and intellectually. You want to know about things that spark your curiosity and you want to be able to convey those in a way that you sound intelligent, that you sound like you know what you're talking about. So there's probably a really harsh critic in there. So I think that harsh critic maybe needs to be soothed <laughs> and reminded and like told some affirmations rather than, oh my God, it's the harsh critic. Time to let them run the show and let them like tell me and convince me that this and that person is absolutely perfect and has everything I've dreamed of. Like, you've got substance. <laughs> Group three, like, we're not comparing ourselves, but if we were, <laughs> like, you've got, you've probably got plenty that other people, if you had a carefully curated whatever, you would be really capable of looking like pretty well put together. There would be people who, if they were dealing with this same energy, would probably look at you and say this person is so passionate so driven so intelligent so well spoken i wish i could set boundaries like that person whereas like you might still be viewing yourself and maybe it's just sometimes <laughs> i'm not trying to sound too critical it's it's supposed to be affirming if this is resonating where essentially tldr we don't want to go down that road for too long if you need to have a nurturing convo with that inner child do so but otherwise just I think there's a journey of seeing yourself in an accurate light 
as you are now. So we have find the lesson, discover the purpose in a situation, trust that you are learning. So yes, the learning process, not the perfection process. <laughs> Group three, I'm vibing with this, trusting this learning process and things are going to happen in that process and you have to have like trial and error to learn. You've probably had your energy tested. You've probably felt exhausted. You've probably felt mentally exhausted. You have probably hit a wall when it came to understanding some concept, but that doesn't mean you don't care. That doesn't mean you're unintelligent. That doesn't mean you're unworthy. It just means there's lessons. I mean, one, like, I don't, I don't even know what life would be like, group three. <laughs> as much as we want to be perfect and we don't want to make a ton of mistakes and we, we feel messy and embarrassing, uh, what would life be like if we were all just, like, perfect and had perfect understandings of everything? Like, I don't even know what there would be to do. <laughs> like, we would all be the same person, would we not? I don't know. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's like the spice of life is what it is. We have ups and downs. Everyone has their battles and this is yours, like however you want to word it. But I feel like there's maybe some old mindsets or some old habits. I won't get too into that. If it's something like literally being consumed, I don't want to be triggering. But if there's some old coping mechanisms or some old paths you don't want to go down again, do whatever you can to steer clear of those because there's plenty you're headed towards. I think there's plenty you're headed towards and if you need to reflect on the past to learn the lesson and move forward, that is great. But as far as the comparison and the dwelling, we don't want to go there, group three. Comparison and dwelling, we do not want to go there because we're going to get wrapped around in it. We're going to get all up in our head with that Page of Swords energy and that's an old version of you. The inner child is not running this show now. <laughs> that's that's what I'm getting there. Your inner child needs to be nurtured and have those affirmations, but they're not pulling the strings anymore. You've come a long way. You have different ways of expressing yourself now. Like, thank goodness you don't still... <laughs> like, there's probably good and bad. Like, the, the honesty that children have, that's great. Um... If, if we're getting angry and just like smashing things in a store, like no, that's probably not great. Thank goodness we have better communication skills than a one-year-old, <laughs> right? That's what I mean here. We have clock time, time, pressure in a rush. So that's not what it's about. <laughs> that might be how you feel. I feel like group three, I mean, I'm not gonna keep like repeating it, repeating it because we've gone over it, but you've got the substance and you're getting there. And I feel like you're like, you've either had tangible victories that you might be downplaying. You might have had tangible victories that you've been downplaying. Be honest if that's you or you're right on the edge of one. Like <laughs> Lady Gaga has spoken, you are on the edge of glory. <laughs> I feel like you're right on the edge of getting some recognition, some tangible, abundance, whatever it is, this goal you're after, if it's just, if your goal is just to be so good at the things you do, you're already there. I hate to break it to you, but you're already there. If you're really smart and you can see how far you have to go, it's, you've got the energy of people who say like, whenever I learn more, the more wisdom I get, the more I realize I have to learn. So there's probably a process of that being feeling like a negative thing and feeling like you know nothing but that's just not true you have skills you have knowledge you have wisdom and i feel like like you don't need to feel in a rush to know everything to be perfect to have it all figured out to have no flaws um to never accidentally fall back like group three like you are human <laughs> i think that's what group three like what do you need to hear right now is that you are human and there might be times where you fall back into that mentality of criticizing yourself. And we don't want to like double down on it and then criticize yourself for criticizing yourself. I feel like that's what's coming through is like, let yourself be human. Let yourself be in a process of healing. Let yourself be in a process of understanding. Um, you don't have to know all of life's lessons all at once. We have follow the white rabbit. Curiosity meets opportunity. So when something doesn't go your way or you make a mistake 
or you find yourself falling back on these old ways, I feel like being curious versus overly critical because group three, let me find the best way to put this. I feel like you're intelligent enough and you care enough with this strong passion energy and you're clearly a very action-oriented person with the double king energy as i said all right group three so long story short to wrap this up because i feel like i've been keeping you here for a long time pretty much if you see something that sparks your curiosity that sparks your interest or something that you feel you could work on that you can improve on I just see this very action-oriented energy of if it's within your control, you're going to do whatever you can to move forward on that path to improve, to always be your best self. So meeting these things with curiosity versus a judgment for yourself is kind of going to set you up with the best foundation to like feel better while you're doing it. Because I feel like you're going to do it either way. <laughs> so if you could do something to make yourself feel better while you're doing it, that's probably going to be your best friend for this experience. So you got this group three, very action oriented people, very intelligent, wise, passionate. We're doing the things. And if you haven't recently gotten like a little break, a little victory, felt like you reached a tangible checkpoint, got that abundance to come through, got that client, I feel like that's what's coming your way. So that's what you needed to hear right now. <laughs> that's what I have for you, group three. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.